Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I am here at the Oradev conference in Malmo, Sweden with uh, Kim Grossman, who has been following, uh, uh, well we've been corresponding for quite a while, he was a reviewer on my book uh, back in 2007 and uh, ran into him here at the conference and uh, really happy to have the opportunity to pair with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Hi everybody. So thanks for joining us. Um, so. Uh, you've been following the the Let's Play series. Uh, you've seen you've seen it from the beginning. I, yeah. I take it. I have. Let's yeah. So you're the first person. I've, you're the third person I've paired with, mm -hmm. and you are the first person who is actually has any clue about what we're doing. <laughs> who knows what this is about? <laughs> which is which is going to be nice. Um, just so you all in the audience know, Kim, um, as with my other guests, has, is not a Java programmer. Um, so we're going to have, probably have a little bit of uh, learning to do there. Yeah, that would be fun. But um, I'm looking forward to it. So you've seen up to the most recent video, which was uh, published uh, up to number episode 47, I think, at this time. Okay, it could be. The look spike. Yeah. That's how we call it. Yeah, so um, yesterday I did some pairing with Roy Ashrov, and we did five more episodes where what we did was we took that spike, and I'll just show you here. We took that spike and we actually created an alternating row table. Um, yeah. And this is a lovely, lovely piece of art that we've created here. Uh, we have alternating rows in Ooh. a beautiful shade of red and green. <laughs> <laughs> That's clear for one thing. Uh, yes, it was very obvious when we got this working. <laughs> so um, what I'd like to do is just continue that work. Uh, if that's all right with you? Yep, sounds good. Okay, so uh, let me. So here's the code, um, and this probably looks fairly similar to the spike code we did. Um, and then here's the test. And uh, Roy and I didn't really get a chance to finish the tests. Uh, I mean, they all work. I can run them. I hope. Fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they're all working, but you know we're obviously still right in the middle yeah, of it. So that's what I'd like to do next. Mm -hmm. So can you sort of walk me through this and see what? Yeah. Um, so if you can understand. So and and just so all of you in the video know, there's we're in this lovely room with a high ceiling and an amazing echo, and. I'm going to try to edit that out when we actually publish the video, but if you hear a bit of an echo, it's, it's due to the room we're in, and I hope it's not too distracting. So, um, yeah, what we've done is, is really quite simple, but uh, Roy liked to, to take a sort of verbose approach to his test, and we never got around to talking about why or getting a chance to get into a fist fight about it, <laughs> which, you know, we're, we got very close, but didn't quite make it. Um, so, what we have here is just a simple single cell, then two rows, then four rows, um, uh, then three rows, and then, yes, then four rows, and then four rows again. Um, looking at the third row, and then looking at the fourth row. And then on this fourth one, we actually discovered, due to the way, I don't know how much you know about swing, but swing, each cell in the table, swing takes a single component and just sort of stamps it onto the screen. So it uses the same components oh, over and over and over again. And an early bug that we had was that we were changing the background color of that cell, uh, but not changing it back for the next oh, okay. row. So, so it this, just floated. the whole thing was the entire the same color. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we're at. Um, so I was thinking uh, cleaning up these tests would be a good idea. So is there anything that jumps out at you as you see this? Uh, I'd like to get rid of the green code to begin with and just kill off anything that's not... Yeah, so we'll get rid of the comments. Oh yeah, one thing that Roy and I discovered was that we didn't need that uh, that testbed frame. So we're not actually oh, okay. rendering a frame at any point, which is really nice. So it's just the table. Yeah, it's just okay. the table and nothing okay. else. That's cool. Yes. Um, and it looks like there's a bit of duplication here in the, in the setup. Yeah, we, we do the same setup over and over again. But I don't know. It's it's clear for one thing. So it's yeah. I think each. I think the individual tests are more or less okay. Yeah. Um, I think if I were to do this, I would probably just make one or two tests. Probably one test that looked just looked at each row individually. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. I I, I think I pretty much agree with with Roy. I really like the the style where you name the tests after your what you're doing and what you expect. Oh, curses. That's two against one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you lose. <laughs> I lose. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll leave this in. I'll wait. I'll just wait until you guys aren't here anymore, and then I'll do it the way I want. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Um, well, actually, let's talk about that a little bit. So, what bothers me about this style is that we're really it's very verbose. Um, we're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, uh, and I don't think we're actually doing more than one thing here. We're just testing one concept, which is whether or not the, take, the rows are alternating or not. Yeah. So another way to do this, if, if I could illustrate, mm -hmm. would be to just create one with four rows and then do four certs that were basically, would. you know, Standard, uh, basically a cert on row zero, a cert on row one, a cert on row two, and then a cert on row three. And then have the failure message guided by by messages, I suppose, to the assert. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that makes sense because I tend to use the, the class name or the the method name to signal mm -hmm. explicitly what went wrong. Yeah. No, I I know that my my style of putting multiple asserts in a single test is is sort of not in fashion right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the compactness of it. Yeah. Yeah, because what you could do is is sort of push push the setup up into into a before mm -hmm. thingy and uh, and make multiple fixtures for the different setups. But that tends to get noisy pretty it, quick. It does. Um, I don't actually like having multiple test classes for a single production class just because of that noise problem. It becomes hard to find your test classes, I think. Especially in Java where every class has to have its own oh. file. Um, I think it's less of an issue in other languages that don't have that restriction. So um, what do you think about trying and seeing, seeing how it looks? Mm -hmm. um, so that would be fairly simple. Um, it would be just a matter of saying, well, really, it's it's what we've got right here. I'm going to inline that or not. Hello, can I inline it? Oh, hmm. it's not going to let me. Um, now I should be able to inline this. Hmm. And then and then I'll say first uh, or just row zero should have standard background. Mm -hmm. And then so you see what I mean by being a lot more compact. Yeah. I can now basically take out everything else. I don't understand why that error's coming up. <laughs> That's the second time I've seen it, and it seems to be fairly random. Actually, one thing that Roy mentioned yesterday in his talk was um, sort of a, a danger of, of multiple asserts, is that if, if, you're, if you're doing a change, or mm -hmm. you're making a change to the production code and the first assert fails, you, you pursue that change and try to fix it, mm -hmm. and the second one fails. You don't know whether you broke it Oh, that's an interesting point. You know, I've heard that argument before about uh, if the first one fails, the second one doesn't fail. And I always thought, well, so what? The test failed <laughs> and it continues to fail. Um, it's an interesting point. I, I'm not honestly that worried about it. No, I've, I don't think I've ever seen it happen in practice, but I've, it caught my ear yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that argument before, um, but I hadn't heard it explained the way you just described it as not being able to know if you actually fixed the problem. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, I think that's kind of an edge case. I, I think that's worrying about a problem that's yes. more theoretical than, than actual. Um, let's see, we don't need get new table anymore either because that is just 
a new um, okay. uh, at some point we may if we if we have more than one of these then you know that we want to factor out yeah. I can see doing that but at this point I don't see the value of it but this get cell background seems to be useful stuff. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Maybe you should um, put the name back to Jim Shore style as well. Okay. <laughs> so the, the one true way? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would... <laughs> but it's really too, raw, too bad uh, Roy, to be here because um, we could very well get into a fist fight. And that would be awesome. <laughs> so um, let's see. What would be a good name for this? Um, well, just I, I would say table rows should alternate colors. Yeah. Nice. Um, so there we go. Um, I wonder if we should do something about the the horrible red green thing. Um, yeah, that, we, we probably should. That hurt my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, something else I think we should do um, is I'd like to test the case where we have this. This generates a table with no header. Um, if you look at um, if you look at the table, you see there's this header row. Uh, and I'd like to assert, I mean, obviously it works because we see it running, but I would like think I'd like to have a test that says this works uh, when there is no header. Okay. And then... Oh, so is the, the header an actual row? Uh, I don't know if it's a row okay. or, you know, when there are, maybe we could say when there are no column headers. Yeah. And then I would also like to say table rows should alternate colors when there are column headers. Um, but let's let's fix the colors first. Um, so do you have a preference? Um, I really like the sort of default blue, blue, gray, blue, white thing that we have there. Okay. Um, that was not really a default. That was just something I made up. Mm. Um, and here it is. Yeah, it looked like a default because that's what I saw first. I yeah. <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's try that. How's that? That's good. Okay. Could be that it needs more contrast, but that's... Um, well, let's see. I think rather than do that on the video, I'll probably spend some time playing with colors offline. Um. Um, but actually, I'm worried about one thing in the test. Okay. In the test case. You had a test there first that tested um, that a single row in the table always had standard background. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure if that's covered here now that you always fill it up with four rows. Mm, so you're saying if we have just one one row that there should be... Um, okay. I, I don't see how it would break, but it's... Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and put that in. Feels like something that might... So... So just when just one row? Mm -hmm. So we should say table row should use default color oh, yeah. or use standard color when just one row. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Yes, exactly. How's that? That's easy. <laughs> Wait. Okay. But oh, was there something wrong? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it used to say 38 runs. But now it says 36, but that's because we deleted a couple. Yeah, so yeah, true. Okay, okay so um, that's just about our time, but I think next time, I hope you'll do a few more sessions with me. Mm -hmm. So um, next time, let's uh, put this next test in and see where it takes us. Yeah, sounds good. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, thanks also to my guest, uh, Kim Grossman. Really appreciate you coming out. My pleasure. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I will see you next time.